Hello, everyone, and welcome to this 22-minute uh, webinar. Uh, here with us, we have uh, Alex Pope, and she's going to go through her success, her insights, and expertise around UGC. Um, and uh, take it away, Alex. Thank you for coming. Okay, thanks, Laurent. I'm just going to share my screen. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, as Laurent said, my name is Alex Pope. I'm the digital editor with Canadian Geographic magazine. And if you're joining us live, uh, I'll blaze through my slides in our 22 allocated minutes, or maybe less so that there's time for questions at the end. Uh, and if you're watching this on demand, I'll also include my email address at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions about anything that I brought up but didn't fully elaborate on, you can reach out to me anytime uh, with those questions. So who am I? Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the digital editor for Canadian Geographic magazine. I've been with them since 2015. And before that, I actually worked for the Weather Network, which is Canada's uh, largest dedicated weather television station. And that was kind of my first introduction to the world of UGC and the importance of user generated content in building audience loyalty, in getting people to engage with your brand. Uh, and I also happen to be a big fan of contributing UGC to the Weather Network even today. Um, that's a picture of me from around 2014. Uh, filming a thunderstorm in the parking lot of their offices. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with Canadian Geographic, I'll just tell you a little bit about who we are. So we are a publication of the Royal Canadian Geographical Society. That is a nonprofit organization that was established in 1929 with the mission of making Canada better known to Canadians and the world and promoting geographic literacy. Uh, so we just celebrated our 90th anniversary last year and the magazine itself started as the Canadian Geographical Journal in 1930. You can see on the left there uh, our very first cover from May 1930. And we've since grown over the past 90 years to be one of Canada's most widely read magazines. We put out six issues a year. And on the right there, you can see our most recent cover, our July-August issue with the beautiful Atlantic Puffin on the cover. Hey, Alex, would you mind going full screen uh, presenter mode? Oh, sure. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> no, I don't want to play from the start. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Um, in addition to our print publication, uh, we also maintain a number of digital platforms and websites where we share different content about the Canadian experience. So we have our main website, cangeo.ca. We also have a travel vertical. Uh, and then we also have our photo club, which is the reason why I'm here today. Uh, so what is the photo club? Essentially, I've got to give you a little bit of history here. And this history far, far predates my time with Canadian Geographic. Um, we have always had a thriving photographic community. Photography and amazing images of Canada is a big part of what we do in our storytelling. Uh, and people have long loved to share their images with us. Uh, in hopes of being published in the magazine or more recently on our websites. Um, so we established the photo club, I want to say sometime around 2008, as a way of bringing that existing community uh, online. And I had some insight into why that was really important a couple of years ago when we were moving offices. And I spent two days cleaning out a filing cabinet that was filled with slides that people had mailed to our offices <laughs> as contest entries or in consideration for publishing in the magazine. So bringing this community online and encouraging people to upload their images to a central location just made really good sense for us in terms of bringing that community together uh, in a way that was easier for our staff to manage. And so today we, we maintain the photo club, we run it on the new Spark platform, and we've grown to over 69,000 members. Uh, thousands of them are active every month. We have over 374,000 images uploaded in our database. And that content, all of the content that gets uploaded specifically to the Photo Club website, uh, generated almost three and a half million views for us last year. And we're on track to hit that again. So a really, really amazing, engaged community of amateur and some semi-professional photographers uh, from all across Canada who love to engage with our assignment galleries, which you can see in the image there. Um, this is kind of the way how we guide them to theme their images and let them know what we're looking for. 
So you may be wondering if you don't already have a UGC strategy in place or you know, it's kind of in, the, in, in its infancy, you may be thinking, well, why would I not just go to social media to try and find this content? Obviously people are engaging with brands they love and uploading content every single day on platforms like Twitter and Instagram and obviously still Facebook and some other emerging platforms. And that's a fair point. And I highly encourage anyone who is considering launching into the world of UGC uh, with their brand to have a fulsome social media strategy in place. Because as you'll see later, the two really do uh, connect really well together. But some of the challenges with social media is, you know, how do you find and surface the content that is most meaningful for your brand? Um, what do you really know about the people who are engaging with you and your hashtags? What if you put a hashtag out there in the world and people are using it inappropriately inappropriately and you're finding you're seeing all this stuff that doesn't necessarily reflect the reality of your brand um new spark and a platform like that excuse me can really take the guesswork out of you know doing social media and and relying on it 100 percent uh, for your ugc so new spark manages the rights to your image this is super important especially for us as a publisher we always want to make sure people are comfortable and aware uh, with how we're using their copyrighted material. Um, so you can set the terms and conditions that you want if you're starting up um, you know, a website where people can upload their content. You can make them agree to your terms before they ever upload an image. And that's really, really powerful and important in protecting you and also protecting uh, your users. Um, it allows you to learn a little bit more about who your users are. Uh, I find social media, you know, some people are really reticent to share personal information for obvious reasons. With NewSpark, it's secure. They create an account. Only us as the licensed users have access to that information. And so I tend to conduct a lot of conversations privately over email with our users, which I find just really, really helpful um, in terms of them getting to know me and feel comfortable with, you know, me and our company and me knowing that there's a real person behind there who's not just stealing amazing images from other people and posting them on an Instagram account. Um, again, going back to managing risks, NewSpark offers automatic moderation tools. So you're not going to be getting any inappropriate material sneaking through into a live environment on any of your platforms. Um, and you can control you know, that to whatever extent you wish we kind of just let the automated moderation run itself on the main photo club site. But for instance, we have a, a separate competition that we're running right now on a different site that's really geared towards more of an educator audience. And so I've actually got um, manual moderation for that. I have to go in and personally approve every single image that appears on that site. And that's just for the comfort of us and for our partners in that program. So that's really great that we're able to do that. Um, and then I wanted to tell you a, a story about one of our users, a super user, in fact, that really illustrates the power of this platform versus social media. Um, the lady that you can see in that image there is Jenny Stevens. So Jenny has been a member of our club since 2010. She uploads dozens of images a month um, and she's incredibly passionate about grizzly bears. This is her lifelong abiding passion. She's 75 years old. And she takes two cruises a year to the Great Bear Rainforest, which is an extremely remote, amazing region, a protected region of British Columbia, where you can observe grizzly bears in their natural habitat. And so this is just what she's decided to do. And she captures absolutely stunning images. And were it not for the photo club, I think we never would have found uh, Jenny you know, she's probably not on Instagram. She's not on Twitter. She might have a Facebook account that her kids or grandkids set up for her. Um, but NewSpark just, it's so much more intuitive for an older user who doesn't necessarily feel comfortable delving into this strange world of the social media that their younger family members are using. Um, so that's great. And we're so, so grateful uh, to have Jenny within our community and like dozens of others like her. Um, our, we've definitely found through our research that our demographic of readership uh, and users tends to be on the older side. So that's a real uh, advantage that we have with the NewSpark platform. 
So how do we use all of this content that we're getting in? Um, as I mentioned, we get hundreds to thousands of uploads a month. Well, it's really important. We're a national magazine. Um, we serve all of Canada, but we're headquartered in Ottawa. Um, so UGC is actually a really vital portal to our users who are spread out across this absolutely massive country, uh, whether they're in Newfoundland, whether they're in coastal BC, or whether they're even uh, in the Arctic and living in a northern city like Yellowknife or Whitehorse. Um, so it's great that we have this opportunity to maintain this conversation with our users regardless of where in Canada they live and how easy it is for us to get there uh, and how often we're able to do that. So we use the UGC in our magazine, obviously, in special interest publications, which are one-off publications that we do annually um, and that have a limited run on newsstands. And I've given an example there. Um, the Best Wildlife Photography Special Interest Publication is definitely one of our top sellers and it's primarily uh, material that's come to us through the club uh, or through our competitions. We put out calendars every year, um, and I've included an example there with a beautiful scene from Newfoundland, I believe. Um, we also rely a lot on um, the material in the photo club to illustrate our digital stories. Because again, it's, it's difficult for us even as a staff to travel even to Toronto uh, to do the work ourselves of getting uh, great illustrations for some of our day-to-day -day content. And so the photo club really helps with that. Um, and then of course, we're using it to build a relationship with our audience and to let them know how much we appreciate them and their support over the years um, and their continued engagement with our brand. So what you can see at the bottom there is an example of our photo club newsletter, which is a monthly communication that goes out to all of our members. And we always share a photo of the month chosen by our editors, an image that we just really, really love, and a little bit more information about both the image and the member who took it. Um, so that's just our way of saying thank you for being such great supporters of the club and of the magazine. And then another, well, probably the most powerful way that we're uh, engaging our audience through user-generated content is through our photo competitions. And these competitions definitely predate the club in its current form, um, but they are absolutely an amazing highlight of our publishing year. We do two competitions per year uh, at minimum that we are the, the named sponsor of, and that is the annual photo competition, which is heading into its 35th year, and the Canadian Wildlife Photography of the Year competition, which for the past few years we've done in conjunction with the Canadian Museum of Nature uh, in Ottawa. And these competitions routinely generate between 5,000 and 7,000 entries each per year, which is just absolutely amazing. Judging them is such a challenge. It's always so much fun uh, to sit in a dark room and just look at these incredible images of Canada and Canadian wildlife uh, and choose our winners. And it's really exciting for our winners too. Um, and so much so that we actually end up getting a lot of earned media through these competitions just because when people are recognized in that way by Canadian Geographic, they'll often go to their local media affiliate and say, hey, did you know this picture that I took locally is featured in a national magazine? And so we pick up these nice, uh, these nice stories in uh, national and regional media without really having to do anything. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. And then the competitions are also, uh, have been in the past and will continue to be uh, a bit of a revenue stream for us. So we have partnered with a number of different organizations to deliver contests on different themes. Um, in addition to the two main ones that we do per year, we've also done these sort of smaller uh, thematic competitions with partners like the Museum of Nature, the Great Trail, um, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and some ministries of the Government of Canada. And then we've also been able to bring in some really exciting prize sponsorship through these competitions. So Nikon is the sponsor of our overall club and our competitions, which is just amazing. They're, I mean, many of our photo club members shoot with Nikon, so that's a natural fit. Um, we've also had prize sponsorship from Vistec, which is a big distributor of camera equipment in Canada. And then also uh, through our partnerships with the Government of Canada, we've had prize sponsorship uh, with Air Canada and uh, Canada's national rail carrier as well, via rail. So really, really exciting prizes. Um, one of the competitions that we did in 2018, we were able to offer a grand prize trip to Beijing for the winner, 
with Air Canada. Um, so it's, it's a huge thing for us and we're definitely excited to continue seeking sponsorship for future competitions. And then I think it's important to note also that through the club, we are building new relationships with these people. You know, we're not just taking their content and using it to make money or to put out magazines. You know, we're uncovering new talent. Um, and I like to just highlight a couple of uh, people who have actually kind of ascended to a new phase in their career through their engagement with us and through the club. So on the left there, you can see a magazine spread um, that we published in 2017 for the 100th anniversary of Algonquin Park in Ontario. And so we had noticed through our competitions and through just regular use of the club um, that this photographer named Megan Lawrence uh, was just submitting a lot of really mind-blowing images of this uh, very historic park. And so when we decided to celebrate the anniversary in print, we thought, you know what? why would we not just pay her to go and do an assignment uh, to create the images that we need to accompany this text sort of reflecting on the importance of this park and it turned out absolutely beautifully and we've definitely used her for other assignments since and then on the right you can see um, a digital article that we had done with a newfoundland photographer named michael windsor uh, he actually leads a photo tourism business in Newfoundland where he will take people out to see the icebergs during iceberg season and give them tips on photographing the ice, photographing the whales, photographing the amazing scenic outport communities of coastal Newfoundland. Um, and so we have definitely strengthened our relationship with him through the club. And he's actually just published a uh, coffee table book of his images, which is just really great. And he's going to be going on assignment for us again as soon as it's safe to do so uh, after COVID. <laughs> so just a couple of examples of these amazing people that we would otherwise have had no idea were out there doing these great things if they had not been sharing their images with us in the club. So what are the keys to success with UGC? Um, I've kind of touched on a few of them already through this presentation, but the main things to keep in mind are that this is a conversation. You're building a relationship with your users. You're not just taking their material and then using it to your own advantage. It's really important to recognize the time and effort that they're putting into creating this content, especially for us. I mean, if you think about Jenny Stevens, she's going on these cruises to an extremely remote part of Canada. Um, that is neither cheap nor uh, <laughs> something that you can just do on a whim. <laughs> so, you know, of course, we, we want to shout her out as much as we possibly can for sharing those incredible images with us. And everybody loves to be recognized for something. You know, when people see that Cangio has shared their image on social media or in the newsletter, they get excited. They want to share that with their family and friends. And that's ultimately helping us to grow our community and to uh, strengthen that, that two-way engagement. So along with that and, and the need to recognize your users comes the need for responsiveness. So making sure that you have a dedicated resource available to troubleshoot people's issues. Um, if they're, you know, if they have questions about how to use the platform, if they have questions about how you're going to use their image or where they can find it and how they can share it. It's really, really important that you have someone who can answer those questions in a timely fashion, because it's just going to create that, you know, the good relationship that you want to build with your community. And then, you know, if you're launching into UGC and you're kind of new in this space and you're not really sure um, how it's going to benefit your brand, you want to just make sure that you go through a very um, a strategic process before you dive in um, and make sure that you're very clear about, you know, what kind of images are you looking for? Or maybe it's video that you're looking for and that's where you want to focus your efforts. And how are you going to integrate uh, all of this material into your publication, into your platforms. Um, just make sure that you have all of those questions answered at the outset, because then once you're rolling, the fourth thing on here is consistency. So making sure that you are doing the same thing week after week, if it's sharing a photo of the week, if it's you know highlighting a user in your email communications, um, if it's doing a competition, consider making that an annual event and you know making it get bigger and bigger but be consistent. Don't just start something and then find that it's actually too time consuming for you 
and you've got all these you know unanswered questions or people who are submitting things and kind of feeling like they're shouting or posting into the void and not really getting much of a response from this brand so those are kind of my my main keys to success and i'm certainly happy to uh speak more about any of those if you have questions and uh, with that we'll move to the q a awesome thank you so much alex we appreciate it lots of great insights um We've seen the publisher uh, segment really shrinking, right? Um, especially uh, print uh, publishing that is moving uh, to digital only uh, because you know the cost of print is, is, is getting a little bit too much. Um, and uh, just by adding more ads onto the website just to try to stay afloat. Um, but it sounds like, you know, Can Geographic has really employed a different strategy. We'll be able to tell us a bit more about that. Is it print or digital or print and digital? How do you guys see that? So it's both. Um, I would say that we are in a pretty fortunate position, all things considered, with our print product. Um, certainly, we have experienced the same downturn in traditional advertising revenue as many, many other publishers have. Um, but our magazine is still very widely read. We have a really strong subscriber base, which is amazing. Um, and print is definitely still king uh, within our organization. But we recognize that people want to engage with us where they're using technology or like whatever they're most comfortable with. So we definitely have a robust digital strategy as well as you saw with our websites, um, with our very active social media community and with the photo club. Um, so we've also, I, I, as I alluded to, we've really focused on building partnerships with other organizations rather than recruiting traditional advertising, um, looking at how we can develop programming that's mutually advantageous uh, with some of these other organizations and just really using our skills, which is creating content to deliver some amazing educational programming that's also going to enhance the mission of our, of our, our publisher, which is the Royal Canadian Geographical Society. Perfect. And it looks like we're out of time, but a quick fire question for you would be, um, what would people need to do to just get started when they don't have a community? What would be the couple of bullet points for you? Strategize. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, decide who within your team is going to be the lead on this. Um, give them the tools to really knock it out of the park. Give them the freedom to think creatively about it. Um, and definitely know at the outset before you dive in what exactly it is you're hoping to get out of this experiment with UGC. You know, is it images? Is it video? If it's those things, you know, what are you actually asking? Like, be specific with your audience. Be like, we specifically want photos of bears. <laughs> and we have literally done that. We've just said, we want to see all your amazing photos of bears. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that this year we need to do a whole competition around baby animals because this is just <laughs> where people seem to be interested in. So just make sure that you have those conversations internally um, and have a really clear plan in place uh, before you jump in. Great. And then probably plenty of marketing after that to let people know that this is available and they can contribute. <laughs> yes. And that goes back to the consistency piece, you know, making yep. sure that your social media is, you know, reflective of the great material you're getting in, making sure that you're recognizing your users in your email communications is really valuable. Um, and just, you know, you're getting great stuff. People want to engage with you. So share it wherever you can and just let them know how much you value that relationship that you have with them. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again so much, Alex, for, for your insights and expertise on this. Um, anybody that's uh, viewing the, the live uh, webinar here or the replay, uh, if you have any other questions, contact Alex directly. Uh, she's even putting her email address right here. Um, so uh, don't hesitate. And again, thank you for joining. And we'll uh, looking, look to uh, catch up with you guys on the next 22-minute webinar from NewSpark. Thank you. Thank you so much.